on the Nebraska Wesleyan University Sports Network. Stadium. You're on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Jeff Motes, John Harris, and the rest of our Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network crew. We are almost through halftime, and uh, there you see the first half stats. Briarcliff with that 9-0 advantage. Total yards, a little bit of advantage toward Briarcliff, 189 to Wesleyan's 142. Passing yards, very surprising. Both are even at 90 yards. 11 first downs for Briarcliff to Wesleyan's 8. And only one penalty for 5 yards lost for Briarcliff, 4 for 24 for Nebraska Wesleyan. Rushing-wise, a three-yard advantage in favor of Briarcliff, and the time of possession goes to Briarcliff, and that makes a world of difference here. But for the most part, just a few numbers are a little bit ahead of one another, but fairly even for the most part, despite the fact that Briarcliff's nine points were all off field goals. Well, you, you talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, let's, let's start with the good. Uh, the good is that Nebraska Wesleyan has kept them out of the end zone. And uh, those three field goals are just a testament to the fact that Nebraska Wesleyan's defense uh, stalled that the offensive uh, proficiency of Briarcliff, kept him out of the end zone, and uh, led to those field goals. Uh, the bad is that the offense, though it has shown some, some movement uh, at times, has not gotten into the end zone. Uh, two interceptions for Green. Of course, one on that last drive. Uh, didn't mean so much, but uh, and of course a couple of penalties, delay of game penalties that took Nebraska Wesleyan out of the uh, you know field was opportunities to sustain drives. And the ugly is just that uh, they they just have to be able to continue to sustain some drives, keep that offense off the field for Briarcliff. Uh, though though neither team is beating the band here, Jeff. Uh, it, 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 all you need is one point to win. Briar, Briarcliff has nine. So. We'll see what adjustments have been made here at halftime for Nebraska Wesleyan, who, again, had a run of good luck in week one. Last week, they suffered a major setback against number three Morningside, and now this week, where it, where it looked like that maybe Wesleyan had the, the advantage coming into this game, they find themselves down 9 nothing. Let's see if they can recuperate from that. And, and, and take care of business here in the second half. But it's all going to have to depend on what they can do on third down conversions. Wesleyan is 2 of 9. Briarcliff no better at 3 of 9. But look at the red zone chances here. 3 of 3 for Briarcliff, none for Nebraska Wesleyan. And, and that's a big difference because Briarcliff has been able to drive that ball downfield. Wesleyan has struggled even to get close to the 20-yard line in Briarcliff territory. Well, Briarcliff, as you look across, they don't have a whole bunch of guys over there, but they have some playmakers. Hey, and, they, and they've gotten the ball to those guys in space to do some things. Big third down catches and so forth. And so Wesleyan uh, has to diversify. Again, use they, 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 that, that passing offense they used at the end of the half, Jeff, uh, did bode well for them. It did get them some uh, yards downfield. But it resulted in an interception, Yeah, it resulted in an interception. Yeah, exactly. So, so they can move the ball on Briarcliff. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, you got to get the ball in the end zone to make all the difference. Here's Kramer Rath to kick away. I believe that's the first time we've seen him all afternoon. And here is right from the two. As he kind of zigzags through the middle over toward the 20 up to about the 24 yard line. Yeah, so he takes it from the one to about the 24. And so let's see what Wesley will do. I love what they've, they've done on, on defense. Uh, those defensive linemen began to pick it up, Shook and company. Uh, of course, you got a bad personal foul fin penalty on Beard. But uh, they played pretty solid here in this first half. Wesleyan defense, you got guys like Hunter Hand, McGill, Beard, who have been very impactful defensively. And then the guys in the secondary, Buss, you know, Shoemaker and, and company. And here is a carry by Noah Ulogden as he gets about a yard of the 25 on the pickup and then Wesleyan defense collapsing in to make the stop. Second and nine here. Briarcliff starting the second half with the football. Dylan DeMarais hands it off again. And looks like maybe about a half a yard, maybe another yard of the play. 
And you wonder what where's Heikus? Uh, well, you logged in is in there. He was the carrier that time. Actually, he'll get about a yard. Now yeah. two yards on the play to the 27. Yeah, and Heikus is just standing on the sideline, so uh, maybe you want to give another guy a chance with a nine nothing lead. But uh, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised to not see Heikus back in there very soon. And that's going to be offsides. Now Hunter Hand coming in to force a big hit. And right with the reception as Wes Betcher finally catches up with them at the 44-yard line. But a flag on the play. Yeah, into the neutral zone is Wesleyan. We do have a malfeasance. Let's see, was he drawn offsides or did he? And uh, see if they give him the play. Uh, again, a nice route run by Briarcliff. They take the play after the the jump on the defense, and they're gonna if uh, this is on the defense. Yep, they're gonna take the play, get themselves to about the 45 yard line. Yep, and a first down. They'll spot it at the 44. Have two fouls on the play. Offside defense number 90. A penalties decline. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense, number 53, in yards from the end of the run, first down. That's well, second one of those. They go from the 45 here all the way to the 41 of Wesleyan. So from the 44, actually, of Briarcliff to the 41 of Wesleyan wow. is where the football moves. So the offside penalty declined, as you just heard, and then the personal foul penalty, the roughing the passer against Hunter Hand. We'll play action here. Toss is going to be complete. And the reception made by Fred Fields around the 30-yard line. Looks like it's enough for a first down. And they're going to move the chains again. And Heikus, I mean, uh, the, the quarterback, DeMore, you, you got to give him some credit. I mean, he's made plays, Jeff, by being able to extend the play, rolling out, and then throwing on the run to a, uh, a wide open receiver, so good job by him. Fields from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Here's Heikus around right tackle. Runs into a tackle, and it's Riley Shoemaker who meets up with them at about the 27 yard line to make the stop. Yeah, we figured Heikus would be back in there sooner than later, and there he is, off right tackle. Nice power, nice speed. Runs right up in there, and then pops right back up to get back across the line of scrimmage for another run. Second down. They'll play comes in from the sideline. They'll put it at the 27 of Nebraska Wesleyan. Out of the gun. Swing pass, near side complete to right around the 20. They're going to mark him out at about the 19 as Wes Betcher comes over and forces him out. So just inside the 20, they'll mark it around the 19. And it will be first down here. Again, that's the big difference. Watch this again. And now, fourth time today in this game that Briarcliff has been inside that red zone of Nebraska Wesleyan. Defense, 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 defense. DeMarais, pass incomplete. And it went off the fingertips of Fields, his intended target. Took his eye off the ball, had it right there. Nice pass by DeMarais. Threw it right to him. He tried to look up field. Good coverage by Andy Clubberod that time for Nebraska Wesleyan. Hit him right in the hands. Can't throw it any better. Second down and 10. This is still at the 19 of Nebraska Wesleyan. DeMarais has time to throw. Got a receiver over the middle in the end zone for a touchdown. And the reception made by Kevin Van Egdom. And Van Egdom gets it in for six with the point after coming up and the Chargers take a 15-0 lead. Yeah, nice little skinny post there. Van Egdom beats his defender and goes up high around the two-yard line and then takes him on into the end zone. 18-yard pass roughly that time from DeMarais. Van Egdom. 
And the extra point is up, and it is good from Landeros. 11.55, third quarter, and the Chargers strike again this time with an 18-yard touchdown pass to Van Egdom, 16-0 over the Prairie Wolves. This is the new amazing. This is the life we dreamed of. This is me and you. Introducing UBT Go, digital banking from UBT. Send money with a click, deposit checks from your phone, and more. We're constantly adding new capabilities so that wherever you go, your money will be right there with you. Visit ubt.com slash go. Union Bank, you belong here. Eleven fifty-five remaining third quarter, and uh, that touchdown pass from 18 yards out to Van Egnum, that stung a little bit for Nebraska Wesleyan. And now it's a chance for them to respond here. Still with some time to work with. This Briarcliff team just, they, they look like they just, they, they have a small crew over there uh, compared to the Wesleyan guys here on the sideline. They stretch all the way down here. And but they have some playmakers, there's no doubt about it. And De, De Murray, he uh, does just a great job of stepping up in the pocket, doesn't panic, and finds Van Egdom right around the, the goal line and into the end zone for the touchdown. Landeros will kick away. And here it is, a high end over end kick. Arlie Meyer is going to get it at about the four. And on the far side of the 20, breaking free, past the 30 almost. But he gets good yards on that return to the 33 yard line. Nice head of steam down the left side there was Myers. That was a great job. 29 yard return, roughly, almost 30 on that return for Myers. Nice blocking, nice uh, in the midst of coverage. And Myers found a seam off the left side and decided just to, to go head that way. He does it. Breaks a couple of tackles. He's still running. Here's Ben Green under center. Quick swing pass over here. Schneider at the 35, curls around. And he is going to be tripped up and stop at about the 38-yard line. Good little pickup that time, about five yards on the play. And it, it's simple stuff like that that can still be utilized and be very effective. Well, we, we saw in the, in the first half, end of the first half, that Wesley can move the ball. And they did a tremendous job just in the passing game. Not so much from the running. Two receivers far side, one here on the short side right, here on second and five. And it is Shaka Taylor who gets the carry, takes it past the 40 to about the 41. And he gets about there. three on the play that time. Yeah, sorry, Jeff, you got to be careful there as Briarcliff is looking to strip the ball out. And it happens as you are rolling as a, as a running back, you're rolling over. You have that ball secured in the one arm, uh, not the other. We saw it with Jamal Charles the other day with the Chiefs. Yeah, you know what? I saw <laughs> exactly. So you, you got to secure that ball in traffic. These defenders taught more and more to pull that ball out of there. Third and a long two. Play action. Toss goes incomplete. McEwen was the intended target. Ooh, they're and looking Wesleyan for fans, I think, are looking for pass interference. Indeed, they are. And, and they're still looking for a flag on, on Sinclair. And that's fourth down. Spencer Sinclair looked like he was uh, riding a horse there on the back of the Wesleyan receiver. Watch this again. Yeah, that. That's kind of bang, bang there. That's a questionable. The question is, when did he get there? And obviously, the referee didn't think he got there too soon. Here's Gelb with the punt. Fair catch can be made by Wright at the 26. Levon Wright, senior, 5'10", from Buena Vista, Buena Park, rather, California. So they have scoured the West Coast, Jeff, and have gotten guys uh, from Oregon, California, with many, many guys from, from California. Now they like to they like to draw an attention, you know, Morningside. A lot of these schools in the GPAC that have got successful programs, they like to reach out. You know, I can remember for years Sioux Falls. How many guys? How many guys from all over the country go play football at Sioux Falls? Flag thrown. 
And reception made over here on the near side of the field by Tyler McGee of Briarcliff. But we got flags on the field. Tyler McGee. And this Number may be hand. We do have a flag on the play. This may be offside against Wesleyan. Let's see. Yeah, the, the, the one difference for Sioux Falls is uh, every now and then they'd get a couple of Division One rejects. Well, I don't want to call them rejects, but uh, transfers. <laughs> Sorry about that. The guys who were in another program and found their way to Sioux Falls, South Dakota to play Defense. football. Number 95, five-yard penalty, still first down. It is an offside. Well, and there are guys that they may not pan out well in Division One, maybe a Division Two program, and they find – Something at the NAIA level and Division Three level. And a swing pass to Hykus goes incomplete. And the Prairie Wolves thought that might have been a lateral. And that would have been open season to recover the football, but the pass is incomplete to Hykus. Yeah, it did look like it went uh, forward to Hykus, and he just didn't look the ball into his hands. But you go, you look at the NAIA and Division Three levels, a lot of schools will take some of those guys that – maybe walked on on a Division One squad and, and they're not getting any sort of sniff of playing time and, yeah. and they want to play, these schools will take those kids in and they'll put them out there and they'll put them to work. And some of these kids, and now there's some more movement. There's Ewing there. Big 79 there on that left side of the line for Briarcliff. And this could be a false start against the uh, Chargers. Six, false start, offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, we told him we'd get his name on the uh, on the broadcast. 6'5", 300-pound <laughs> junior out of Temple, Texas, just south of Waco, near, Texas. Near right Waco. On, right on Interstate 35. Yep. Nice young man. And Demaray's pass in the flat, near side goes incomplete. McGee was the intended receiver. A little skipper there. Didn't get his feet under him. He's just throwing all arm. And he's shown some signs that he can throw, you know, a nice ball. But right there, just an all arm throw. Bounce it. Well, one hopper to his receiver. And so Wesleyan now is third and ten. Big opportunity here in this third quarter. And your defense has really got to come through here. The crowd getting into it. Trying to rally the troops. Demarais pass over the middle. And it's around the 37-yard line, enough for a first down. And he took a shot. And that was Donald Dresden with another big catch. Boy, Demery, he stood in there, and he took a shot from two Wesleyan defenders. I think Hunter Hand was in there. Indeed, he was. I'll and, tell you. and Scott was in there as well. Wow. They, I mean, they sandwiched him just as he threw the ball, and he threw a strike to the Briarcliff receiver. And now we got a new quarterback in. Yeah, he's going to have to go out for a play. Try to get a look on the roster, not on the too deep chart. Jaden Swenson, looks like, for Briarcliff. Now he's a running back from Omaha, Nebraska. And but they got him in as a backup quarterback. Now, the backup quarterback is Matt Quick. He's 6'4", 260 pounds, and a junior. He's on the sidelines wearing a headset. He's sending in the plays. And he's from Arcadia, Nebraska. So you got some kids from here in the Cornhusker State that will go play at Briarcliff. And then now a big gain as... Swinson again takes the carry. And now he's hurt. Right shoulder. And he's going to come off. So we got about a second. Make that a third and seven, it looks like. Third and seven. Now Swinson, boy, he, he got hurt. Left arm. Right arm, rather. And Demaray is back out there. I wonder what those two plays were about. That's a good question. Demaray to throw down the far side of the field. Got an open man, but a little far out in front, incomplete. And they got a Looking flag to again. Drisdom. Drisdom was the intended receiver, but another penalty flag, as you said, John. Out on the field right around the 40-yard line. Let's see if they're going to call. Hopefully this is not roughing the passer again because uh, he did take he did get a step. Holding, there it is. There's a holding penalty against Briarcliff. 
Right, so they'll all go back about 10 yards. That's good for Wesleyan. And they'll force that back. And it's stuff like that that Wesleyan can try to benefit from to try to turn the table. But it just seems like Briarcliff has found a way to answer back when they face adversity like this. Well, you know, I, I'm going to give some credit to Demaray because Holding. he has sustained drives. Declined. He has gotten out of the pocket. Point he has down. hung in there just like he did just there and took a huge hit and delivered a strike downfield. So I give a lot of the credit to him. You know, Junior at 6-1 from Milwaukee, Oregon. Never knew there was a Milwaukee, Oregon. Well, there is now. Here's the punt. And the Prairie Wolves are going to let Jones pick it up at about the 17, 18-yard line. He's on the return and thrown out of bounds right over here on the near side of the field. And it will be Wesleyan with the football here on their next drive here at the, let's see where they put the ball. They're going to put it around the 29-yard line. Yeah, Josh Dolph slung him out of bounds. Make that 31 as they reposition 31-yard line. This is a moment for Ben Green to kind of try to turn this offense around. But when, you're, when your running game isn't giving you what you need, and they know you're going to pass, they can get, get on their heels. Shaka Taylor takes the carry. Gets about two yards up to about the 33-yard line. And, and it's getting kind of chippy out here. you got guys talking to each other, chesting up on each other. That's the second conversation that... Uh, Two guys are having face mask to face mask. So we might want to be careful here, Jeff. Maybe, just maybe, some point in the time in this game, uh, the, the penalty will be a personal foul after the play as uh, we're getting a little bit more chippy here as we move along. Second and eight. Here's Green over here to Darner, and Darner is picked up and stopped by E.J. Olszewski. From Alvin, Texas, Olszewski. Nice one-on-one -on -one tackle on the edge there. And you have to make that tackle if you're a cornerback. That's a loss of a yard back at the 32. This will be a third and nine. Nice break on the ball. Now, just like they did in that first half, Wesley is going to have to get this ball downfield. Larson has been a, a target here today. We haven't heard much from... Weedle here recently. Weedle's been held very quiet for much of this game. And now we got movement. Free play. Pass far side, it is complete for Nebraska Wesleyan. And a face mask to add pa to it. And Pankos makes the catch and takes it to the 35. But there are two, looks like there's one penalty flag. I thought there were two, there are two. One on the far side, one here on the near side. So we may get offsides and face mask. Boy, if it's a face mask. And I think the coach at Briarcliff, uh, not happy. Watch this again. Pan Coast with it. Yep, face mask on Hoy Thompson. And the officials are conversing on what Wesleyan will do. Let's get the official word. First down. So the Prairie Wolves decline the offside and they'll take that face mask penalty the ball is at the Briarcliff 49 let's mark that that might be a turning point in this ball game if you're Wesleyan you only hope that's the case play action green pass tipped up incomplete oh that was going to be picked off by number 24 for Briarcliff Spencer Sinclair read it broke on it and when uh, DeAndre, uh, Andre Reyes broke it up he broke up a clear interception because Sinclair was on a on a B line to cut right in front of the receiver, and he would have intercepted that ball and run right down the sideline. My goodness, Conway was the intended target. 
for Wesleyan. Second and ten. Thank you, Reyes. Here's a pitch. Taylor spins and he stopped. They'll mark him down at the 47 yard line of Briarcliff. That's a two yard gain on the play. I like the burst from Shaka Taylor. We just got to get more out of it at the point of attack. Get to that next level. So third and eight. Closing in on six and a half minutes, quarter number three. Yeah, this is the time where you say somebody's got to make a play. And it may be your quarterback on a run to get out of trouble. Here's Taylor in motion. Green, far side, complete to Larson and a first down. Wrapped up and tackled. No, it may be a takeaway. Is it a takeaway? Let's see. Is it, it Larson. a takeaway? Larson had the ball. And they're going to mark him down at the 31. Briarcliff thought they took the ball away from him. We don't have replay. Let's watch this happens. again. There's Corey Jones. Yeah, he's down there. He was down there. There yeah, he, he go. Yeah. He was down. From the 31, first and 10. Here's Green. A little bootleg over here right side, and it is Green who's going to take it. And he'll pick up the extra yards. Gets about seven on the play down to the 24. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Go ahead and take it. You're a big, strong guy. Get around the edge. Your receivers now turn into blockers. Get on down the field. Get out of bounds. Don't take too much uh, damage to the body. Get down. Get out of bounds. And uh, get the next play in so you can get started. Already 20 seconds, 19 on the play clock. Darner and Larson, far side. Conway here on the right. It's on the edge there. Somebody got to pick it up. And Taylor gets the carry through the 20, gets the first down, and takes it down to the Briarcliff 16. And for the first time today, John Harris, Nebraska Wesleyan gets into the red zone. Well, that's beautiful. There you go. Uh, again, this is still a long way to go. Still the whole fourth quarter. Five minutes left here. Well, mark the ball at the 17 of Briarcliff. So Shaka Taylor with a nice carry through the middle of that line. You know, and for all that has happened here today, you know, you're only down a, a touchdown and uh, okay, a two-point, you know, two-point conversion. So three receivers far side left. Schneider out here to the right side. Green out of the gun. Blitz is on. Taylor with the carry, and Taylor's going to get. Probably two yards on the play down to the 15. That's Good. it. And probably shouldn't have got anything, but a nice sidestep in the hole and the lean forward gets him the yards that he did get. And again, Weedle, we haven't seen him in a while. Guy who can make plays. Not a part of this offensive scheme at this point. And they'll give him a yard on the play, actually. It's down to the 16. It's second and nine, under four and a half and counting third quarter. 16-0 Briarcliff. Green will send Theus in motion. Swings it over here to Taylor. Taylor with an opening. 10, 5, hits the pylon. Did he get in? No. Out at the 1. Oh, wow. Make that out at the 2. First and goal, Nebraska Wesleyan. Nice call, nice execution, nice run, nice effort. Nice, all the way around. Thought he might have launched himself into the end zone. The official says no. And so Wesleyan now in, in prime real estate now, the two-yard line, see if they can power this, this ball into the end zone. First and goal from the two of Briarcliff. Now, Weedle is in. Green sends a man in motion. Weedle. Tries to power his way through the line, and he's going to be denied. Well, that's just that's a one just yard loss. Briarcliff at the point of attack. I mean, you got to fire off that ball as the offensive line for Wesley and the Prairie Wolves, and uh, man on man, push your man back at least uh, two yards. That's what you got to do. You know the count; they don't. So here we go, Shaka Taylor back in the ball game. I tell you, Shaka Taylor's had a couple of pretty good runs here on this drive. Why not go to him? Well, what, what you're also looking for in this moment, a little play action. 
They like to see him go off right side here. And a man in motion. Little option keeper, Green, trying to stretch his way toward. Ball on the ground. The end zone. But they're going to mark him down at about the one. So he gets two yards on the play. This will be a third and goal from the one. So the question is, if they don't get it here, will Coach Keller kick the field goal or go for it on fourth down? Now we get the big, the, the, the big package in here. So we look. I'm expecting play action here. Well, you got two receivers in there. You got Schneider and Larson. Those will be your two wideouts. Larson is your possession receiver. Pancos over here to the right side as well. They'll put Jones over there. Taylor's a wide out to the far side. Watch the quarterback draw. Quick toss right in the end zone and dropped by Shaka Taylor. It was right to him. He was right there. Nobody around him, and he dropped the ball. Let's see if Coach, the, the, the offense says, let's go, Coach. And yes, that's right. He was right there, Jeff. He was right there. He had the ball. Just dropped it. Look at that. Oh. So close. Wow. Wow. And so they're going to go for it. Fourth and goal at the one. They had to play. Beautiful, beautiful execution except for the catch. Nebraska Wesleyan going to go for it. And now they're going to keep the same formation, although they're going to keep Shaka Taylor in the backfield. Fourth and goal. Big play. Green. Into the end zone to Taylor for the touchdown. Great, great call, great redemption for that young man. After the drop, Shaka Taylor on the nice little half back out in the flat. They got redemption. And so Shaka Taylor with the one yard reception in the end zone and the point after coming up and here comes Kramer Rapp. Well, you feel good as a player that the coach would go right back to you right after the drop. Great job, great call, great execution. Snap of the hold. The kick is up from Kramer Rath, and it is good. Two minutes and ten seconds to go. Nebraska Wesleyan finally on the scoreboard. Still some work left. They're down nine, 16 to 7 on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. You should pick Wesleyan because it's a school that whatever you want to be in life, you can certainly do it. I wanted a small school, a small campus where I could be one-on-one -on -one with my professors. It's just like one big family. Not to mention the, the kind of education she gets is wonderful. I didn't apply to any of the schools. I know Wesleyan was the one that I wanted to come to. We want you to come join us and be part of the Prairie Wolf family and be a part of the tradition of success. Shaka Taylor with the one yard reception in the end zone. Let's watch this again, Ben Green. And that time Taylor gets it in there for the touchdown. And out of Norfolk, Lutheran High Northeast, Shaka Taylor, a sophomore, with a big catch. And again, what, it, what you know, here you are. That's why you, you got to have a short memory in sports. You don't have a whole lot of time to think about what happened previously. You, you make the drop, and now you got to get back out there and get ready for the next play. Right. He does that and uh, catches the touchdown. So tremendous job of concentration by that young man after what could have been grave disappointment. Nice response by the Prairie Wolves. They took a chance and it paid off. And now Wesleyan down 16 to 7 with 210 to play in this third quarter. You got to be careful here. Make sure you get your coverage in. Kramer Rath with a deep end over end kick. And Wright's going to return it from the end zone to the 10. Pass the 15, 20. Up past the 35, down to the 40, and Kramer Rath has to come in and help out and knock right out of bounds. And there it is, just as we said there. you got to be careful here. Right, out, right after your score, you got to cover. And uh, they allow right, right down the sideline, almost to the 50-yard line, Jeff. Prime real estate for Briarcliff. And now they'll work from their own 46. And for a team today that has really been moving the ball well downfield, like you said, prime real estate. That's big time. I mean, this is this is opportunity right here for, for Briarcliff. And now Wesleyan looking to blitz. Swing pass here in the flat. Bobbled around, and it is caught. Complete here on the near side into Wesleyan territory. They'll mark the ball at the 47-yard line. Reception made by Jacob Diaz. 
on the play, so they'll put it at the Wesleyan 47. He has a freshman, 5'11", Winchester, California. Seven-yard pickup for the young man. So it looks like he's shown some signs here uh, that he, he's, a, he's a, a guy to keep, keep an eye on. We'll see him in years to come. DeMarais throwing downfield, overthrown incomplete. And uh, that time he was trying to launch the home run ball down to Fred Fields. He had a better chance with Tyler McGee here on the left side. He had beaten his man, Garrett Farr. But uh, DeMarais was looking the other way. Kleberod was the guy that was covering downfield for Nebraska Wesleyan. And he's been on some deep coverage here a few times this afternoon. Third and three, a big third down. Big third down is right, Jeff. Out of the pistol. Got to get off the field here. DeMarais swings it. It's Heikus who gets it. Gets the first down. Finally wrapped up by Riley Shoemaker. They'll stop his forward progress. And it is Heikus who takes it down to the Wesleyan 42. So the yard markers will move. Yeah, nice play call there by the Chargers. Wesleyan had the blitz on. And they had the right play call. Nice screen right. And, of course, when you're screening right to Heikus, He's going to do everything thing he can to get to the orange, you bet. Uh, orange cone. You bet. First and ten. Out of the gun. Swing pass in the flat. It is complete. Reception made by Tyler McGee over here on the left side, and it took Wes Betcher, I believe. Here's Drew Ogden. Yet 14 on the on the tackle there, Agna. So Agna in on the stop, second down, and we'll call it two. He's out there on an island. Those those cornerbacks out there on an island. Here's a handoff, Heikus around left side, pass a 30 down inside the 25, tries to stretch for the 20 yard line, and he is tripped up on the play by Agna again. Yeah, Agna holding on for dear life. Jeff grabs a foot, the leg, the right leg of uh, Heikus, and you better grab whatever you, ever whatever you can. And he grabs that leg, and Heikus goes down. First down here for Briarcliff. And it looks like they're going to let the clock run out down to the final 10 seconds of this third quarter. And Briarcliff threatening again. They hold on to that nine-point lead, 16-7, to as we go to the fourth quarter. Back to Able Stadium in just a moment. Oh, hi there. Sorry, couldn't see you at first. I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and it's first filter Friday, so I'm just checking my furnace filter here. Looks like it's about time for a clean one, which I just happen to have right here. You know, a small investment today can really reduce your heating costs and improve your efficiency. You can really see the savings. Yeah? <laughs> for more tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. We will see you next time. Still a good crowd out here today for Hall of Fame and Homecoming. Couldn't have asked for a better day for football in Lincoln either. Oh man, these are beautiful, beautiful people out here. And they, the Wesleyan stands here on this west side. Very sun-drenched stadium here, Able Stadium. Well, we have a bright blue sky, a few tiny puffs of clouds. You couldn't have asked for a better day here in mid to late September in Lincoln. Yeah, not very much breeze at all. So this is this is what you want if you're a football player. But the heat is on though on the football field with the final 15 minutes about to unfold here. Nebraska Wesleyan finding themselves down 16 to 7 to begin this fourth and final quarter in Briarcliff starting to surge here. And the pass goes incomplete. Right over the middle cutting in was McGee. That's nice defense all the way around. Nice pass rush and made him rush. Agna once again on the coverage does a just tremendous job on McGee in coverage, and uh, they don't they're not able to take advantage. And let's see what happens here. Well, you got a no huddle here. On Watch for Hikus. Down. Be a great time for Hikus off off tackle. And it's Hikus around left side, and he is going to be denied. Good job at the point of attack by the Wesleyan defenders. Uh, you, uh, just looking at that setup from here, 
It looked like just a play for Hikus. Looked like he's going to get the ball, and he did. Trevor Holen was in on the tackle that time for Nebraska Wesleyan. Yep. Well, not that I'm a prophet, have premonitions or anything, but uh, you could probably see, you know, he's going to get the ball. Third and ten. Watch the flat pass here. From the 21 of Wesleyan. Demaray going to keep it. He's going to run with it. He's got an opening. Did he get close to the first down? No. Stop short by about a yard. He gets a nine-yard pickup on the play down to the 12. So critical, critical decision here for Briarcliff. Do we bring our field goal kicker back on again? He's done a tremendous job all game. Landeros is the guy that they got three field goals from before they scored their first touchdown in the third quarter. And so, clock is ticking. Play clock is down to 12. And now they're going to go for it on fourth and about a yard. You got a 2,000 yard rusher out there, career rusher. And now, here's a ball that's going to be tipped up in the air and goes incomplete. And it's Hunter Hand and Brandon McGill that come in there to help. Deflect that pass as it goes incomplete, and the Prairie Wolf defense gets a big stop. And he comes around that corner like like Lawrence Taylor. I'll tell you what. Watch this again. Here's Hunter Hand. He's the guy right there. He was able to break up that pass. What a great, tremendous first step by Hunter Hand around the outside of the, the offensive tackle and gets just enough of DeMoray's hand to, to have the ball flutter into the end zone. Another stall for the Chargers, and now opportunity for the Prairie Wolves. From the 13, Green going to air it out. Upfield, got an open man. Oh, and it goes incomplete. Had a good look. Upfield that time. Intended target was Taylor Monks, the junior out of Litchfield. Well, he was there. He was there. Nice throw. Close only good in horseshoes and hand grenades, folks. Not there. Awfully close. Right there. Just couldn't complete the catch. Second and ten. Hand off Weedle. Weedle to the 20. And he stumbles ahead. Finally corralled at the 26-yard line and a first down. Good boy, pickup. Boy, a shot out of a cannon is Weedle. And they need that from him. And so this would be a great opportunity now to get the offense moving quickly as they did at the end of the first half. Keep the momentum. Keep the rhythm. And that's that's what you need on offense sometimes. You just got to get into a rhythm. And once you do that, the plays just keep on coming. People just see opportunities. Playmakers make plays. So a new set of downs, first and 10 from the 26. Shotgun formation here for Ben Green. Swings it. Weedle. Weedle going to run with it. Try to get out to the outer edge, and he is going to be stopped. Trying to get behind the block that time. And it looks like maybe a one-yard loss yeah, back of the 25. Yes, sir. You had big number 59. Jack McAravey was the guy that was blocking for him. Yeah, 6'7", 315 from Sydney, Nebraska. My goodness. Big kid. You go out there. I don't know if he's from a farm, but when you, you know, wherever he's from, you go out there and milk the cow. Just pick up the cow and squeeze it. <laughs> That's how you get milk. Second and 11. Now Jones in motion. Over the middle. Larson drops the ball incomplete. Keep your eye on the ball. Secure it. And now that's going to go against the quarterback, but we can see time and time again, uh, receivers are not keeping their eye on the ball. Yeah. They have yet to give an asterisk when the receiver drops the ball. <laughs> they just give the quarterback an incompletion. So once again, we say it time and time again, another big third down for Wesley. Third and 11. Green looking to throw. And it's going to be incomplete. Steiner said he caught the ball, but the official says, nope, incomplete, hit the turf. And now fourth down, here comes the punting unit. Yeah, you wonder in that series, can you be a little safer? But Larson, if he catches that ball, that gives you a whole other uh, 
scheme in terms of what you want to do on that third down play. So that's disappointment for Wesleyan. After the fourth down stop on Briarcliff, and now they give it back to that, that offense. Who's not beating the band, Jeff, but just doing just enough. Here's Gelb with the punt. Come for the punt block. Almost blocked. He goes upfield, takes a bounce. All the way down to the 31-yard line. That's where Briarcliff will take over. Yeah, they sold out on the punt block. It was close. Wesleyan, now they flip the field here. So how much how much more can the Nebraska and Wesleyan Prairie Wolf defense do? I mean, they've they, kept this team in this game. Well, and now they got to keep Briarcliff at bay again. As you can only ask so much. And now the handoff and a big time takedown for Beard coming in to make the stop on Ulogan. Boy, nice job shooting the A gap there. That's Beard. B line right to the running back. Watch this again. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. So Beard coming in to make the stop. And that's oh. a linebacker's, linebacker's dream there. You see the opening. You see the, 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 the running back right there. You just got to go make a tackle. Blitz is on. Hunter Hand with a sack. Boy, this defense is playing, playing some great, great, great defense. Tremendous. Now, we talked on the open about the, the sacking ability of uh, Briarcliff. Well, well, guess what? Uh, the shoe's on the other foot now. Now we got to get a stop here on third down. Wesleyan attacking Gimaray. Third and long here for Briarcliff. And now Wesleyan defensively trying to gain that momentum back. you got to watch that nice seam route. Look for number seven. Gimaray, short toss, complete. Positive yards, enough for a first down for your login. And they're going to stop him at the 41. It is a first down. They'll move it up actually to the 42. That's where he got the first down. Boy, well, give Demaray credit again. Got out of trouble. Eyes downfield. Found his man. First down. New set of downs. 10 17 to play. 16 to 7. Briar Cliff over Nebraska Wesleyan. Swing pass. It is complete. Over here on the right side of the field. Reception made over here on the near side by Briar Cliff. That, that was Fields Fred again. Fields who made the catch. That's Fred Fields. Grand Rapids, Michigan, folks. Senior, six foot. Again, plays from the sideline. That Wesleyan defense called on again. Second down. And now Tyler Sorensen and Brandon McGill at the point of attack. Wow. Make the stop on Yulagin again, who was the ball carrier. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, the challenging thing here, Jeff, is that, you know, first and second down, yes. Third down, you got to be able to do it again. It's a beautiful play by Sorensen and McGill in the backfield. So here we go, third and nine once again. Can they make another stop? Demaray, pressure's on, Beard is on him, looking to throw, pass is complete to Fields, who breaks tackles. 30, 20, 10, touchdown. Wow. Playmakers make plays. That's what it's all about. That is tough to swallow as Fred Fields on what looked like maybe a broken play is able to make a catch and take it downfield for the touchdown. Give credit to DeMarais again. He broke contain, found his man, and there goes a broken tackle. Got away from number three. For, from, the, for, from the Nebraska Wesleyan. Leberod was the guy that was on his tail. And Fields is in the there. end zone. In the end zone. Here's the extra point. 
Landeros makes it, and it is good. 9-16 to go in the ball game. It's Briarcliff 23, Nebraska Wesleyan 7 on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Oh, hi there. Sorry, couldn't see you at first. I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money Saving Energy, and it's first filter Friday, so I'm just checking my furnace filter here. Looks like it's about time for a clean one, which I just happen to have right here. You know, a small investment today can really reduce your heating costs and improve your efficiency. You can really see the savings. Yeah? <laughs> for more tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. We will see you next time. Abel Stadium is where we're at for the homecoming game and the home opener for Nebraska Wesleyan. I believe that was Clayton Welch who was up there in that cherry picker. The north end zone doing some video work. Harley Meyer will be back to return well, that's a tough. That's a tough one for Wesleyan. I mean, you've, you've, uh, you, you did, you do bend and you don't break, and then a missed tackle on a on a broken play. Beard had a bead line, bead line on Demaray, couldn't get him. He gets out of contain, looks downfield once again. So I got to give that young man a lot of credit, Jeff. He's, he keeps those plays alive and he finds his man downfield. Here is the uh, kick, and Myers going to. Have it drop out of his hands. He'll pick it up at the five. Hesitates and stopped around the 19-yard line. Yeah, they got to work on that. Fortunately, it didn't uh, prove to be any more detrimental closer to the goal line as he did get out of the shadow of his in, own end zone. So you ask yourself, uh, you know, as Wesley, do we, do we have some drives in us? Do we have the ability to get downfield in a, in a timely manner to get, you know, get another score on the board. This is the 13th meeting between these two teams. Wesleyan holds an 11-1 advantage over the Chargers. As Green eludes a tackle, looks up field, and the pass is going to be out in front of Ryan Larson incomplete. Yeah, Larson did slow down there at around the 35-yard line. The lone win in this series for Briarcliff came in 2009. They beat Wesleyan 8-7 here in Lincoln. And the other interesting side note, over the past five seasons, Nebraska Wesleyan has won each game by an average of over 22 points. And now, with nine minutes to go, Wesleyan finds themselves down 23-7. And now we got movement. Briarcliff says that Wesleyan moved first. <laughs> yeah, that's the old finger point. No, it's you. No, it's you. He did it. No, he did it. False start. Offense. Yeah, they Number used, 50. Five-yard the penalty. There. Still second. Doesn't like anybody's leaving, Jeff. Everybody's hanging in here for homecoming here at Nebraska Wesleyan. First home game. The court was announced. For homecoming, they had that introduced at halftime. Green, downfield, Schneider leaping up, incomplete. Now, you were homecoming king, weren't you? No. You weren't homecoming king? Nope. You didn't stuff the ballot box, is that what you're saying? No, did not okay. stuff the ballot box. Okay. <laughs> well, I can tell you who was in my class. It was B.J. Nannan. B.J. Nannan, okay, I can see that. Who, I can see that. Who I played basketball with over at Northeast. He wanted to play basketball here at Nebraska Wesley. Now, B.J., he would stuff the ballot box. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> B.J., a pretty good friend of ours, has Ben Green's pass is under thrown incomplete over here to Mitch, rather uh, Ryan Larson over here on the near side, and fourth down here for Nebraska Wesleyan. Yeah, now this this thing's getting away from Wesleyan. Defense going to be back on the field here again. And uh, and if if you're Briarcliff, you're not going to take your foot off the gas. You know, Wesley is going to the uh, other conference. This this is our uh, meeting. We've been getting our, our our butts handed to us over the over the years of working of playing this team. Uh, we're going to give it back to him a little bit. Andrew Gell back in punt formation. 
See if they sell out again here. Here's the punt. And the Prairie Wolves are going to let it bounce up to just across the 50. Well, that's pretty good. And they'll mark it down to the 47. Or from where he was, that's a good kick. It is, but still good field positioning for Briarcliff. With 8.39 to play here in this ball game. And boy, Briarcliff on the verge of picking up a, a big win because you know they're coming off a tough loss last week to Dakota Wesleyan. They fell 55 to 14 in that game. And then Briarcliff coming down here to Lincoln to pick up a win on Nebraska Wesleyan would be a big boost for them. Yeah, they're, they're feeling good about themselves, see if they want to run this clock out here. And then now they're going to give it to the tailback that time. That was the backup tailback for Briarcliff, which was Jaden Swenson, the freshman out of Omaha. Yeah, Swenson comes in as at quarterback, or you know, you could call him uh, Wildcat for two plays. Probably a Wildcat. They had to bring out uh, Demaray. But instead of bringing in a, a quarterback, they bring in a running back. He throws one into the dirt and then runs one off tackle. Second and nine. Demaray in the pocket, and that's going to go incomplete. Flag thrown. Betcher going to be called for pass interference on Swenson. Yeah, he should have gone for the ball. If he goes for the ball there, it's likely he doesn't get that call. But he went for the for the man. But Betcher is going to be whistled for the penalty. Got there a little early, but if he plays the ball, he has every opportunity as a defensive player to go for the ball. And this is going to give uh, Briarcliff a little bit more real estate here. So going to add 10 yards here. First. So the pass interference call against Betcher. And so. From the 48. Left side hash mark. And Swenson who gets the handoff and Brandon McGill tracks him down across the 50 at the 48 of Wesleyan. Yes. Now you have kind of a Drone Bettis type here in Swenson. 5'11", 250. All right, a bruiser. Uh, unlike a uh, Hikus, uh, a little bit more shifty. And so Swenson's in, in here just to kind of, you know, just run this thing, bruise the defense, keep the chains moving. Keep letting the clock run down. Play clock at 15. Dave Murray taking his time, gets a snap. Swenson with the carry. And he Bumble. loses the football, and Betcher takes it away from him. Wes Betcher took the ball out of the hands of Swenson, and he has stopped at the 50-yard line. Now, that just seems impossible. But Betcher, as we talked about earlier, you know, these defensive players taught to, to pull at that ball, and Betcher pulled it right out of the arms of Swenson, who, Look was, at that. who was moving in Look traffic. Look at that. And, and save uh, the, defense, the offensive player there. He may have been off to the races. Right under seven minutes to play. Reggie Williams grabs him and brings him down. And now, oh, Mo may be in brown and gold here. First and 10 from the 50. Far side, reception made Schneider with the reception at the 45. Five-yard pickup on that play. Now, that secondary of Briarcliff just hasn't been tested yet the way we thought it might be. Sure, we're getting nice short passes and so forth. But there, there has to be somebody moving down that seam. Here is Green, far side, pass complete. Schneider again with the catch, almost lost it. You better be careful there. He's telegraphing, doing a little Marconi telegraphing there. Want to be the, careful. Down at the 42-yard line, third and two here for the Prairie Wolves. 
Now Green will go to his left. And Larson was the intended target. Gets wrapped up and stopped. Yeah, didn't catch it. Olszewski was in on the coverage that time for Briarcliff. Yeah, they're going to go for it here in fourth you down. Got have to. To. You got to do it. Have to. But once again, Green's going to get the incompletion. But the receiver, once again, there should have caught that ball. Ball's in your hand. 6.34 on the clock. Fourth and two for Nebraska Wesleyan. A draw play. Green's going to get it. Gets the first down across the 40 and stretches the football across to a 30, up to the 38. And a first down for the Prairie Wolves. Good little quarterback draw that time for Ben Green. I like the call. Secure the first down. Here's Green again. Has a man open. Downfield, far side, and it's into the, oh, grasp incomplete. It was Schneider. He was right there, and he bobbled the ball. Boy, they're going to look back at this tape, Jeff, and see any number of passes where they should have had catches. And there it is again. That's a touchdown. you got to catch oh, that every ball. every bit of it. Watch it again. you got to catch that ball. Right there. Now you can say a little bit tough over the shoulder, looking back into the sun. He, he'll tell you he should have caught it. Green, swing out far side, and the catch made. It's like Pancos made that catch on the far side inside the 35 at the 34. He will tell you I should have caught it. But once again, like uh, Shaka Taylor, you got to have a short memory. Your time, your number's going to be called later. Far side pass over thrown incomplete. Darner was the intended receiver, fourth down. Yeah, Green's losing a lot of his mechanics here, Jeff, because he's in a hurry. Got to stay solid, keep your feet set, throw a nice strike, a nice ball, because you start sailing it, Briarcliff is going to jump the route, and uh, they're off to the races. So you'll want to pick six here. You keep your mechanics, stay solid, get the first down. Here's Green. Over the middle, overthrown, incomplete. Shaka Taylor was the intended receiver. And the referee umpire was in the way. Shaka saying, get out of the way, man. And Green's talking to the um umpire, too, telling him there was some interference, but. Yeah, the umpire's right in the middle of the field. Shaka Taylor turns around. Let's see it here. Take a look at it again. Yep. <laughs> and he's looking at the umpire. Yep, he's not phased. <laughs> There's nothing he can do about it now. Well, Green went over to plead his case. He's not going to throw a flag on himself no. for interference. Here's the blitz on here as Hykus gets the carry, and it's Betcher who comes up and helps stop him. Boy, what an opportunity after a great play by Betcher. Gets the ball back from Nebraska Wesleyan. And so this... But, you know, Briarcliff now about five and a half left in this ball game. They're just trying to get out of town. They're just trying to get back up well, I-29. I and what they're trying to do is they're trying to burn some of that time off the clock. The play clock is down to 17. There's 5.20 to go in the game. Yeah, they probably should just snap this thing about, you know, two seconds left on the clock. They're taking their time. And now Demaray will launch it downfield. Far side, it goes incomplete. There's all kind of... Uh, motion there. Once again, LeVon Wright moved again on the snap. That that play was all discombobulated there. And so Damon Wright figured I'd take a free one and see if I can get the play downfield. So third and we'll call it nine. Wesleyan showing blitz, flags come out. Wesleyan said that there was some movement on the offensive line. So they'll move it back down to the 29, third and long. 23-7 if you're Joining us here late in the game. And we'll reset here with 
Briarcliff working here on third down. And it's Heikus who gets the carry and breaks free. Up to the 45-50, got the first down. And he's met up by Agna on the far side of the field in Wesleyan territory at the 43-yard line. And that that's going to get it done. I'll tell you what, the, you know, we still got about just under five minutes, but what an opportunity as Heikus. We don't have his exact stat right now at this moment, but uh, this guy's a gamer. 2,000-yard rusher for this team, career rush, rusher, tremendous uh, power and speed, just a player. Tremendous run by him there. And here's Heikus again. They expect more of the same. Gets the carry down to the 45, about a three-yard gain on the play. And, you know, we talked about during pregame how much of a threat he could be on offense. And he's actually proven that several times today. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't been a world beater out here by any stretch of the imagination. You know, you know, we're not, we're not mistaking him for Amir Abdullah uh, or anything like that. But uh, he's solid, and that's what he has to be. Uh, tough inside the tackles. And of course, now we just saw the speed that he possesses in the latter part of this game here. Second and seven coming up. Now they've gone to the air to get up on the scoreboard. They've gone to the ground game, too, as Heikus gets the carry again. No gain on the play. It looks like maybe about a yard, and that's it. There's Brandon McGill in on the stop for Nebraska Wesleyan. And now timeout taken by Nebraska Wesleyan. Three minutes and 35 seconds to go. 16-point advantage for the Chargers over Please Nebraska the Wesleyan. Clock at 338. And we'll be back to Abel Stadium in just a moment. What excites me is being able to build something that isn't there. We're not about following the norm. We're about creating. New concepts, they're always in the back of my head. The burger place that everybody wants it to be. It just went crazy. But it wasn't at a point that we knew it could fully support a new adventure. Sebastian's Table is everything I love about food. So Union Bank willing to take on a restaurant and give us a chance. We know there's always somebody there who will back us if we want to do something new. We don't want to slow down. We're ready to keep rolling. Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. There you see Tyler Francis. He was the starting quarterback a year ago, graduated, now an assistant on that Nebraska Wesleyan sideline. Boy, he was very efficient passing the football a year ago, too. So Wesleyan burning the timeout. And play will resume here in just a moment. Third and seven. And a handoff to Heikus around right side, and it's Riley Shoemaker comes up to make the tackle. And it's just, looks like it's just enough for a first down. It's close. Well, next week, Nebraska Wesleyan will take a road trip up to Midland. They'll play at Fremont next Saturday afternoon. Two weeks from today, we'll be back with you here at Abel Stadium for the big showdown with the Doan Tigers. Oh, yeah. The 101st meeting between those two teams. So that's our next broadcast here on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. will be October 3rd with Doan coming to Lincoln for a 1 o'clock kick. And that's, all, that's always a, a good ball game, win or lose. They, they've been at it a long time. Oh, boy. Well, a year ago, it was clearly Doan that came away with the victory. Two years ago here, it went down to the wire. As Heikus gets the carry, spinning through the middle, and tackled around the 30-yard line and a first down. But that game two years ago, Connor Zumpf with a huge diving catch in the end zone that gave Nebraska Wesleyan essentially the victory on a misty, cool, 
electrifying night here at Abel Stadium. That's, that, that's very descriptive. Well, it was dreary <laughs> weather-wise. A little cool, but the stands were pretty much packed for that game. First and 10 here for the 30. Here's Hykus again on the carry. Gets about a yard down to the 29 in Nebraska Wesley and it's timeout is called by the Prairie Wolves. They'll burn another timeout with two minutes and 32 seconds to go in this game. 23-7, Briarcliff back with more in a moment. You should pick Westland because it's a school that whatever you want to be in life, you can certainly do it. I wanted a small school, a small campus where I could be one-on-one -on -one with my professors. It's just like one big family. Not to mention the, the kind of education she gets is wonderful. I didn't apply to any of the schools. I know Westland was the one that I wanted to come to. We want you to come join us and be part of the Prairie Wolf family and be a part of the tradition of success. Head coach Brian Keller coming into this matchup today. 105 wins, 90 losses in 20 seasons. And that goes back to 1996. His first team was 2 and 8, 1 and 5 in conference play. Then they go 5 and 5 the following year and then 6 and 4. 4 and 6 in 99, 2000 they were 8 and 3. Oh, no doubt. The best record they had under Coach Keller so far in his 20 years, but there was a three-year stretch, 2006, 7, and 8, where they went 7 and 3. They had some good football here at Wesleyan. He had some good players that have come through here, solid, too. Solid program, too, and, and the consistency of uh, Brian Keller. And here is Hykus, who takes it down at the 25 on a four-yard pickup. That'll bring up third down and another timeout. But nobody's told this young man it's the fourth quarter. No. Okay, he's running like, uh, you know, he just, it, we just started the ball game. And Wesleyan looks like they're going to burn their final timeout. The 2.24 to go in the game. But you, you have to commend the job that Coach Keller has done with some of these players over the years. And, you know, after 2009, went 5-5, five and five, 2010, 4-6, four and six, 2011, 5-5. Five and five. Then they went 6-4 and four and 12 and 13. The last year had kind of a rough year at 4-6 and six, some close games that didn't go their way. But he's done a pretty good job in maintaining a solid program. And he's only had only a handful of losing seasons. Well, you know, this, this Nebraska Wesleyan team, and is, he's been the leader here, and he is the leader. 11, number 11, the most wins of all NAIA active coaches. GPAC Coach of the Year in 2000. And, and having been a person employee of Nebraska Wilson years ago, I mean, here's a guy who's done it the right way. Yeah. Okay, so. And, he, and again, four, only four losing seasons in 20 years. That's not bad. <laughs> well, but, but in the landscape of college football today, uh, at just about every level, it's what have you done for me lately. Here's the handoff, and it's Hykus again that gets the carry inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Regardless, though, with the carry, he's up by you've Hill. had pretty much one, two, let me count here. About 10, roughly 10 winning seasons, but then there were a few seasons where he's at 500. Well, well the great thing about this program, and of course, many in the NAIA, the GPAC, uh, is that it takes a, a whole staff of people. Uh, and and it, this institution, the AD, all the other folks that come together to make this happen, even the people who made this possible for us today. Uh, everybody comes in, plays their part, and uh, does a tremendous job helping these young students, student athletes, Jeff, student athletes, yep. get their education and become good citizens. So with a minute 38 to go, Briarcliff will take the time out and then we'll resume play here. But lots of things to look ahead here coming up 
in the next couple of weeks. Again, they go to Midland next week. Doan on the third, Concordia. They're at Concordia on the 10th. Back here in Lincoln on the 17th of October against Dort. And then they hit the road after a week off. They'll hit the road on Halloween to play at Dakota Wesleyan, and that's not exactly an easy place to play either. Oh, no way. But they finish out November with two home games against Northwestern and Hastings, and we'll have those two games here on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network as well. We'll bring you Doan, Dort, Northwestern, and Hastings. Those are the games that we have left in our schedule. Here's Heikus around left tackle on fourth down, gets the first down inside the 20, tackled at the 17 yard line. And the clock will stop with a minute 33 to play. And that's pretty much over right now. And uh, this is gonna be a tough one to swallow. I know last week it was tough losing 86 to 10 to Morningside who's now number two in the country. And yeah, and that's gonna sting a little bit, but I'll tell you, you, there were there were opportunities here today. Oh, tremendous opportunities. Yeah. And there were those opportunities that they they just did not pan out the way that Wesleyan wanted them to. They got into the red zone at least one time, and that's that was the scoring drive that they had to get on the scoreboard in the early part of the third quarter. Well, they're going to look at the tape, and they're going to see uh, drop passes. They're going to be some, in, some inefficiency. Uh, you can't get your didn't get your run game established, and so yeah. forth. And so you're putting I mean, it's, the, putting the onus on Green uh, and so forth. And if you're going to do that, then guys got to catch the ball. Yep. Okay. Had a couple of bad penalties there in the first half, but uh, as they go into victory formation here, well, they're probably going to do it one more time after this, unless they're going to let it run out. I think they're just going to let the clock want, run out as players on the field shake hands and. The entire team from both sides is going to come out at the 50-yard line to shake hands as time winds out. And unfortunately for Nebraska Wesleyan, here on homecoming, they cannot come away with a victory. And for the second time in the series history, Briarcliff picks up a win over Nebraska Wesleyan, their first win in six years over the Prairie Wolves here in Lincoln, of all places. The final, Briarcliff 23, Nebraska Wesleyan 7. So, for our entire Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network crew, along with Jamie Wins and John Harris, I'm Jeff Motes. Saints so along. Thanks for watching. Good afternoon from Abel Stadium in Lincoln. Sports Network broadcast was made possible by Lincoln Electric System. It's your electricity, own it. Union Bank, you belong here. And Nebraska Wesleyan University.